Hi, Michelle. Today's topic is about Takaoka copperware, a traditional craft from Takaoka City, Toyama Prefecture with 400 years history. Today's Takumi, your innovator, has come up with a totally new method of coloring the copperware. Let's go and meet him. Takaoka City, which faces the Sea of Japan, produces 90% of the copperware made in Japan. Hello, I'm Michelle. Hello, I'm Koji Ori. Today's Takumi is Koji Ori. He is a craftsman who specializes in coloring copperware. In Takaoka, specialized craftsmen handle each of the various processes in producing copperware, including casting, which involves pouring the molten copper alloy into a mold, engraving designs on the metal, and coloring the metal. The Takumi's metal coloring business started with his grandfather. First, he showed us a traditional coloring technique. This is salted rice bran used in making pickled vegetables. Just as it is? Yes, it's just salted rice bran. What the Takumi took out was fermented rice bran with salt that is traditionally used in Japan to make pickled vegetables. Wait, <laughs> you're spreading it on the surface? Is that okay? Sure, you just spread it out like this. Wow! Then the Takumi started to burn the copper surface coated with fermented salted rice bran using a gas burner. After he washes it with water, designs are starting to emerge. Hey, that's amazing! I can see designs appearing on the surface. The sodium chloride and sulfur that are contained in the fermented salted rice bran react with the copper and create a coating. And there are other techniques, such as applying grated radish and cooking it in a solution of copper sulfate and copper carbonate. And another method, where the Takumi polishes the copper by applying a solution containing vinegar on heated copperware. A characteristic of Takaoka copperware is that it is colored using familiar culinary items. Why did you need to develop a new method when you already had techniques to bring out different shades of colors and textures? Well, one simple reason is that the division of labor to create Takaoka copperware is very specialized. Within that system, the only thing that my company can do is to apply color on the products. But that is only possible when we receive work. So I thought that I needed to come up with our own original products to color and sell them. Sales of Takaoka copperware reached their highest record in 1990, but sales started to drop soon after. By 2003, sales had fallen to less than half of what they were in their peak period. As the Takumi watched people in the same profession go out of business, he thought that the situation of just waiting for work to arrive had to change. The company needed to develop a new market and new products. He then set his sights on making small items and utensils with copperware, but that would require coloring thin copper sheets under one millimeter in width. A traditional Takaoka copperware's major productions were Buddhist altar fittings, figurines and ornaments. There were no techniques to color thin copper sheets. The Takumi tried coloring the conventional way, but the thin copper sheet melted at the heating stage. So he set out to find a chemical solution that would produce colors at a low temperature so the copper sheet would not melt. After two years of trial and error, his new technique was complete. He came across a combination of chemicals which developed beautiful colors without applying too much heat. Whoa! So many beautiful colors have emerged! This color is his masterpiece. He named this color Hanmon Kujaku, or Hanmon, which depicts a mottled pattern, and Kujaku, which means peacock. 
Thanks to this method, we could create our own original products, rather than waiting for jobs that were entirely contracted. Because thin materials can be given various colors, the Takumi now makes tables and wall materials with the copper sheets, as well as items that didn't exist before, such as coasters and business card cases. The Takumi participated in many leading trade shows around the world with these new products and has received high acclaim. He is continuing to actively promote the appeal of Takaoka copperware around the world. I think there are still many more possibilities and opportunities because Takoka City, its copperware and the metal coloring are not really widely known. I want to put more effort into what I do so our copperware will become more common and well known to people. Today I brought in some samples of Takaoka copperware which were made using the Takumi's new color method like the bracelet I have here and the necklace and the earrings and also the tray and the wine bucket you see in front of you. Wow, they're all very beautiful and the designs, you know, they're very modern, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And this is a tray. I was thinking that this looked a lot like the moon. <laughs> yes, it does. Right, the textures are like craters and it reminds me of space. <laughs> yes, it does. Thanks to the method he developed, product development with this kind of finish using simple sheet copper is now possible. There's still hidden potential, even with a traditional craft that has more than 400 years of history. It seems to have been very well received abroad as well, and I'm excited to see how Takaoka Kapawao will change in the future. Yes, thank you very much, Michelle. So, Ms. Yamazaki, how would you wrap up today's program? Well, we've looked at the technology for binary cycle generation, in which electricity is produced from hot spring water and also seawater. Japan is an island nation and also home to a great deal of volcanic activity, so I could see how promising this technology is. Meanwhile, a recent topic in space exploration is that we've come to understand how other celestial bodies in our solar system, especially the moons of Saturn and Jupiter, have hydrothermal activity like the Earth's hot springs. I'm looking forward to the day when this technology might be able to be used in space as well. Thank you, Ms. Yamazaki. And thank you all for watching Science View. We hope to see you all next time.